friends welcome to my youtube channel dhanesh here see today i am going to discuss about principal component analysis let's start machine learning models create wonders when the data set provided for training is large having a good amount of data allow us to build a better predictive model as we have more data to train the model however using a large data set has its own drawbacks the biggest limitation is the problem of dimensionality to get rid of this a process called dimensionality reduction was introduced dimensionality reduction techniques can be used to filter only a limited number of significant features needed for training and this is where pca principal component analysis comes into picture let's discuss in detail about principal component analysis as mentioned pca is an unsupervised dimensionality reduction technique that enables you to identify correlations and patterns in a data set so that it can be transformed into a data set of significantly lower dimension without loss of any important information the main idea behind pca is to figure out patterns and correlations among various features in the data set on finding a strong correlation between different variables a final decision is made about reducing the dimensions of the data in such a way that the significant data is still retained dimensions are nothing but features that represent the data now we will discuss about what is principal components see here we are transforming the variables or features or dimensions to a new set of variables which are known as the principal components or simply the pcs the principal components are computed in such a manner that the newly obtained variables are highly significant and independent of each other to understand the principal component analysis in a better way you need to understand the mathematical concept eigen values and eigen vectors which are related to matrix see eigen vector of a matrix a is a vector represented by a matrix x such that when x is multiplied with matrix a then the direction of the resultant matrix remains the same as vector x mathematically the above statement can be re represented as ax is equal to lambda x where a is any arbitrary matrix and lambda are the eigen values and x is an eigen vector corresponding to each eigen value see to understand the principal components uh, as eigen vectors you need to understand this equation a minus lambda i determinant a minus lambda i equal to 0 the principal components are the eigen vectors of a covariance matrix and they are orthogonal see the covariance matrix i will explain you what is covariance matrix we will be discussing in detail what are all the steps to be followed uh, for this principal component analysis these are all the different steps uh, we need to follow in principal component analysis normalize the data compute the covariance matrix 
calculating the eigen vectors and eigen values choosing the components and forming the feature vector forming the principal components now let's determine the step one that is normalize the data if you are familiar with data analysis and processing normalization of data is the first step Normalization is a technique often applied as part of data preparation for machine learning. The goal of normalization is to change the values of numeric columns in the data set to a common scale without distorting differences in the range of values. Step 2 is the, you know, computing the covariance matrix. See, as mentioned earlier, PCA, Principal Component Analysis, helps to identify the correlation and dependencies among the features in a data set. A covariance matrix expresses the correlation between the different variables in the data set. It is essential to identify heavily dependent variables because they contain biased and redundant information which reduces the overall performance of the model. Mathematically, a covariance matrix is a P by P matrix where P represents the dimensions of the data set. Each entry in the matrix represents the covariance of the corresponding variables. Consider a case where we have a two-dimensional data set with variables A and B. The covariance matrix is a 2 by 2 matrix as shown below as shown in the figure here. Covariance of A, comma A represents the covariance of a variable with itself. Here you can see covariance a comma a that represents the covariance of a variable with itself which is nothing but the variance of the variable a covariance of a comma b in the matrix represents the covariance of the variable a with respect to the variable b and since the covariance is cumulative uh, sorry commutative covariance of a comma b is equal to covariance of b comma a See, covariance, you may be familiar, familiar in statistics, covariance value denotes how codependent two variables are with respect to each other. If the covariance value is negative, it denotes the respective variables are indirectly proportional to each other. That means as one variable increases, the other decreases. A positive co covariance denotes the denotes that the respective variables are directly proportional to each other. Step 3. Calculating the eigenvectors and eigenvalues. We already discussed this step. We calculate the eigenvalues and eigenvectors by using the equation determinant a minus lambda i equal to 0 as discussed earlier. Step 4. Choosing the components and forming a feature vector. See, we order the eigenvalues from largest to smallest so that it gives us the components in order, in order or significance. Here comes the dimensionality reduction part. Uh, sorry, dimensionality reduction part. If we have a data set with n variables, then we have the corresponding n eigenvalues and eigenvectors. It turns out that the eigenvector corresponding to the highest eigenvalue is the principal component of the data set. And it is our call so as to how many eigenvalues we choose to produce our analysis with uh, 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 analysis with to reduce the dimensions we choose the first p eigenvalues and ignore the rest 
we do lose out some information in the process but if the eigen values are small we do not lose much next we form a feature vector which is a matrix of vectors in our case uh, the eigen vectors in fact only those eigen vectors which we want to proceed with uh, uh, proceed with right yeah since we just have two dimensions in the running example we can either choose the one corresponding to the greater eigenvalue or simply take both next is uh, step five step five means forming principal components here this is the final step where we actually form the principal components using all the math we did till here for the same we take the transpose of the feature vector and left multiply it with the transpose transpose of the scaled version of the original data set here new data is the matrix consisting consisting of the principal components and feature vector is the matrix we formed using the eigen vectors we choose to keep and scaled data is the scaled version of the original data set uh, data set sorry t is the superscript t here t the superscript denotes the transpose of a matrix which is formed by interchanging the rows to columns and vice versa in particular a 2 by 3 matrix has a transpose transpose of size 3 by 2 Next, we are going to discuss about the applications of principal component analysis. Principal component analysis is predominantly used as dimensionality reduction techniques as discussed in domains like facial recognition, computer vision and image compression. It's also used for finding, finding patterns in data of high dimension in the field of finance, data mining, bioinformatics, psychology, etc. It's used in spike triggered covariance analysis in neuroscience, quantitative finance and medical data correction. That's all for principal component analysis. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe. Thanks a lot.